Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So today we have this question, what is the reward for reviving a forgotten sunnah? So what is a forgotten sunnah? <clears throat> forgotten sunnah is a sunnah which Prophet وسلم, and his companions have done in their life. But with the passage of time, people have stopped doing it. So now the question is, what are the examples of forgotten sunnah? The best example is, uh, it was a sunnah of Prophet Muhammad to sleep directly after the Isha Salah. Nowadays, people don't sleep after Isha Salah. They remain wake up for quite a long time. Sometimes they are busy with internet or other stuff. So they sleep late. But we need to remember that it was the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad to sleep after Isha Salah. And many people unfortunately don't know this thing. <clears throat> this is one example of forgotten sunnah. There are many other examples as well, which people have just completely forgot. Then another example is to take a nap after the Zuhur Salah. This was also a sunnah of Prophet Muhammad But now people have practically forgotten it. They don't uh, practically perform it. Maybe because of their job or some studies or other stuff. They don't do this. Then there are many other examples as well. For example, yes, this is another example that nowadays when people marry and they have husband and wife usually have a sexual relationship before going to sleep it is allowed in islam there is nothing wrong in it you can do it but the question is what is the sunnah time for it the time for mention the the sunnah time for it is before fajr salah so you can also revive this sunnah in your uh, married life that sleep after the Isha Salah, don't do anything, then wake up before the Fajr Salah, pray the Hajjud Salah, and then do this thing, and then it will be good for your offspring, your children as well. The children born because of this, Inshallah, will be more religious and better. So today I have told you three forgotten Sunnah, which sadly many scholars have also practically forgotten in their daily life. So you can revive these forgotten sunnah in your daily life. So these are the examples of forgotten sunnah. Now, what is the reward for reviving a forgotten sunnah? So if you revive these sunnah in your daily life or in the life of others, then what reward will you get from Allah Almighty? The answer is in the book Mishkat al-Masabi. Hadith number 168 and 169. There are many other hadiths as well. But today I will just show you only these hadiths. <clears throat> so here is the hadith number 168. You can read it. So here the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If anyone revise the sunnah of my sunnahs, that had become unknown after me. To, today I have given you three examples. The sleeping of Resha Salah, taking a nap after Zohar Salah, and uh, going to your wife um, before Fajr and after Tahajjud Salah. These are the three examples of forgotten sunnah. There are many more such examples. So if any of you revise the sunnah that had become unknown after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then for him is a reward like the reward of those who abide by it <clears throat> and without the reward being detected in the last. So if anyone starts sleeping after Isha Salah, inshallah he will get some reward from Allah. But if any of you, there, any person start that sunnah because of you, then you will also get the same amount of reward from Allah Almighty <clears throat> and this will not decrease the reward of that person. But here is a warning for us. If anyone of us introduces a misleading bidda, 
introducing something new in Islam, which Allah and His messengers are not pleased, and also which Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has never done in his life. Then against him is a sin like the sins of those who practice it without their being their burden being softened in any way. So if I start something new in Islam and because of me you also start do, doing that, you will get a sin. And I will also get same amount of sin because I am the one who invented it. So be aware of starting inventing new things in Islam. You cannot add or remove anything from Islam. You must give reference for everything from Quran and Hadith. So you need to be careful. <clears throat> then we have another Hadith related to this, which is Hadith number 170. What happened here? The Messenger of Wasallam. the religion will shrink back to Hijaz just as a snake shrinks back to its soul. Whenever a snake feels some threat, he runs away and he returns to his hole. So similar thing will happen to Islam. With the passage of time, people will slowly start forgetting the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallam. In they will practically stop uh, following the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Slowly, slowly they will go away from the religion and slowly, slowly Islam will also shrink back to the Hijaz area. And the religion will seek refuge in Hijaz just as a wild goat seek refuge in the mountain top. If you ever watch the videos of mountain goat on internet or YouTube, you will see that whenever they face a threat, they go to the cliffs because it is difficult for predators to catch them there. So same thing will happen. When Islam will feel the threat everywhere, it will become weak. It will return to Hijaz. Hijaz will remain a strong point for Islam, inshallah. Now here I will, instead of the translation, I will show you this because this translation Arabic is a language which is impossible to translate into other languages like English as well so we can't translate perfectly Arabic into English you better learn Arabic to understand it completely so same thing this sentence in the bada gariban kama bada fatuba lil -ghuraba. This is also one of those sentences which is almost impossible for anyone to translate it exactly in English. So here someone translated it like uh, begin as a poor. We can't call it wrong, but to be honest, it is not the exact translation of this sentence. So gariba basically means a strange thing, a weird thing. So I will try my best to explain it. But in order to understand it best, you need to learn Arabic, to be honest. So here, <clears throat> Prophet ﷺ said that Islam started as a strange thing for people. When Prophet ﷺ started conveying the message of Islam, many people thought that he had become mad or a devil or jinn has taken over him. So they felt a very strange thing in Islam because they were in the darkness of Jahaliya. So they felt Islam a strange, a strange thing, a weird thing. So Prophet ﷺ tells us here, told us here that Islam started, started as a strange thing. And it will return just like it started. So at the end time, again, the Islam will become a strange thing for the people. It will become a weird thing for the people. So whenever you will follow a sunnah of Prophet Muhammad people will feel that you are doing some weird thing, some strange thing. Let me give you an example for this. People, every one of us, Alhamdulillah, pray the Friday Salah. But sadly, 
people have forgotten the optional uh, salah related to Friday salah. Now, if we they pray some optional salah as well, I go along with the obligatory salah, but to be honest, that is not mentioned in the hadith. So the one which is mentioned in the hadith, when we tell anyone about it, they feel it are like a new thing or strange thing. Many scholars even don't have the idea of this because nowadays even scholars don't have the time to read hadith. They just study it in their degrees. After that, they really get a time to get uh, to read the hadith, sadly. So people have also forgotten this sunnah uh, related to the Friday salah. Then there is another example of a man once, a young man once told his parents that he wanted to revive the sunnah. He, so he wanted to revive the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad in which Prophet married widows and divorced ladies. Like Prophet was 25 and he married Khatija who was uh, 40 years. So he wanted to follow the similar sunnah just for the sake of Allah. And his family thought that he has become mad. So these are the examples of uh, whenever you will follow some sunnah act, there are many sunnah when you will follow them in your daily life, people will think that you are doing something strange. So here Prophet Sallallahu also told us that Islam started as a strange thing and it will return just like it started. So again, at the end time, people will feel Islamic thing, Islamic sunnah as a strange thing. So good news for the stranger. So Guraba basically means those people who do strange things, who do things which are different from the other people. So Prophet gave a good news to the people. And they are the one who correct what people have spoiled after me from my sunnah. So again, sadly, people don't know what is sunnah. Scholars also don't have time to read sunnah, hadith book. They just read Quran and few hadith and then narrate it to the people. But sadly, nowadays, we really find anyone who read hadith book from the first page until the last page. They just read few chapters, few hadith from the books and leave the rest of the book. So as a result, sadly, we see that our all our environment is spoiled. So good news for those who correct what people have spoiled from the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad So just wait for the reward from Allah Almighty. Follow the Sunnah. Try to read Hadith book from first page until the last page. Don't do this that you read few chapters which are included in your syllabus and leave the rest. This is not good. And try to make habit of reading it daily. Even if you read only few hadiths, it will be good for you, inshallah, in the long run. But if you read few pages from one, from initial chapters, few from the middle and few from the end, this will not benefit you. So may Allah guide us all. May Allah protect us all. May Allah give us all um, consistency in reading the Hadith books from first page until the last page. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samiul alim. See you all next time, inshallah. Maasalamu.